Hey everybody, Tom here, and today I want to teach you how to play Topiary, and I mostly I just want to play. Uh, so Topiary is a really neat, small, quick playing game, um, strategic, like, what would you say? It's like, um, I don't know, spatial awareness kind of a game about uh, looking at these coolly shaped Topiary bush thing, hedge things. What would you call I don't even know. All the words. All the words that you want to use, put those there. And so that's what we're going to be playing today. You'll see I've got the board set up. It is made out of um, a 5x5 five five grid of these tiles. And the tiles have different shapes and numbers on them. Uh, but they all start face down. Each player starts with a hand of three tiles that are normally kept secretive. So in a regular game, you would not be able to see each other's hands. Um, and then in a two-player game, you're going to start off with eight visitors each. Um, if this was a three or four player game in the rule book, it kind of shows you right here nice and bold that the three player game would have six visitors and the four player game would have five visitors each. So we're basically set up and ready to go. Uh, before we start playing, I'm going to take a second and teach you um, how the scoring is going to work in the game and that's going to kind of dictate our game flow. So let's just get closer to this part of the board so I can tell you how the game is going to score at the end. So throughout the game of Topiary, um, each of us, the blue player and the red player, have eight of these guest markers. And we're going to basically be putting these eight markers around the outside edge of the board. And there's three different kinds of positions you could be putting them in. You could put them kind of central on a tile. Oh, that wavy needs to turn. All right. So you could put it centrally. And that means that that visitor is looking at the garden this way. You could put them obviously above centrally. And they're going to be looking at the garden this way. Or you could put them on a diagonal, and not just the diagonal here to look down this way, but you also could kind of um, angle it, and I'm going to try to put them in a way so it's obvious. Like you could put them here, and that means that the visitor is looking at the garden down this way. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to put the hedges and the topi... I don't... are they called to... it doesn't matter. Um, we're trying to put the things in a way that they can see as much as possible. So I just want to kind of set up some examples of how this is going to score. So let's pretend at the end of the game, again, like I said, you would normally have all eight visitors out and then you would score all the directions. But let's score for this one visitor. So the visitor is looking down this way and I'm just grabbing the blue player's hand so that we can't actually see what's underneath these. And let's pretend like it was set up in this way here. So if this is the end of the game, this visitor, can see, uh, we'll go this way, these things. The way that this particular visitor would score is um, each tile is going to count for the number of points that it shows, but only if it's visible. And to be visible, the tile in front of it has to be smaller than the other tile. So here, this tile can definitely see this whale, and so that would be a plus one or one point, but because it's the same size as the swan, they can't see the swan. So here, I'll turn it like that so you know it's not going to score. So they could see this one for one. They could see this one also because this is bigger than things in front of it. So this is going to be one, two, three, four. And then they can also see this swan back here. Um, if a tile ends up face down during scoring, it counts as a zero here. So they could see one, two, three, four plus another four is eight for this visitor. If by chance this had been switched up, let's just do an example like this, then they could see this whale, and they could see this big swan for four, but they can't see anything behind it. This four is blocking everything else. So they can see one, and then plus four would be five. You can also get bonus points for having the same type of um, the same type of uh, taupe bush <laughs> uh, visible. So right now, only the whale and swan is visible. But if we go back to our original example, like this, well, still no bonus points because the whale is visible and the elephant and the swan. But if by chance things look like this, then the swan is visible, the elephant and this swan. And so each of these swans, because there are more than one of a type of tile scene, um, they would each score an additional point. So in this example, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then bonus points nine and ten. So that's kind of what we're trying to do. We're trying to get our visitors in a position to see the best things possible. So let's pick up these tiles here and take them back to the blue player um, because that was their hand. 
All right, so this game is basically going to be played over eight rounds, and the game will end when we are all out of visitors. And on your turn, so straightforward, you're going to do two things. Number one, well, you have to do number one, and then you may do number two. Pretend I used numbers that didn't sound like poops. But you're going to take one of your visitors for step number one, and you have to place it around the outside edge as we just discussed. So let's grab this guy and go back over. And, you know, I was thinking with a three in the middle, that's awesome because the, the tiles are numbered one through five. So if we could just get a one, two, three, four, five, that would be awesome for this visitor. So let's just put this visitor kind of where we had it for the example, like that. Okay, so step number two tells us that we need to look at the line of sight and we're going to pick one of these tiles to take into our hand. And so here, let me grab our hand really fast. So we've got our hand. We're going to take one of the tiles from the line of sight of this visitor, bring it into our hand, and then we're going to pick one of our tiles from our hand to put back down. So as we're trying to get one, two, three, four, five, and ooh, no elephants, which is too bad, but we could go for the swan thing, just like we were talking about in the example. So let's grab this tile here, put it into our hand, and the red player would not be able to see what we're doing. And let's drop a number one swan in its place. And that is the end of the blue player's turn. So we'll just go return these, and then it's going to be the red player's turn. All right. Um, cool. All right. That's what the blue player has got. And as much as I want to examine different strategies, at least here at the beginning, <laughs> where the red player has low numbers and that three is in the middle, I think the red player is going to follow suit pretty closely. So let's actually approach this from the top, though. So this red player is going to go put their um, put their little gurple, meeple, um, but, uh, yeah. And let's approach it this way. And again, we have ones and twos. Uh, she's got an elephant, a swan, and... Ooh, an elephant. All right, so we want to get the one elephant here. So let's pick up this tile, and it is... All right, I think they call this a pom-pom, probably. So let's grab this pom-pom and put it back in our hand. And we're going to replace it with this one elephant. That was the red player's turn, starting off pretty awesomely. So now the choices are going to start to get a little bit trickier. It's not going to be so clean as that very first move. Um, but let's grab our next uh, meeple. Yeah, you know what? We're calling them meeples. And remember, my ultimate goal is for the blue player, and also for the red, because apparently I'm not smart enough to think of two strategies, is to get a one, two, three, four, five. I want to get the four swan here. So I do have that four swan in my hand ready to go. So I need to put this meeple somewhere where I can swap out this tile for the four swan, which means I could put it here. I could like here or here. I could put it here. I could put it here on the corner looking this way. I could put it here on the corner looking this way or this corner or where was I? Ooh, this corner looking that oh, no, this corner looking that way. This is, this is where the options start to open up. Um, but let's keep looking at five tiles if we can for now. And so I'm going to go ahead and place here in order to grab this tile, which is a two um, noodle. And we were going to replace the four swan with that one. Oh, we'll go ahead and put it right there. Okay, cool. So we just want to make sure that we keep low numbers in front of that four. All right, so the red player, we do have some twos available to us. Maybe it would be good to get those down. Um, they don't match the elephant, but they do match the swan, and I kind of want to misplace that so the blue doesn't have great access to it. And so if I want to get that two down, I probably need to come in this direction. But with a two going right here, maybe it would be best to hit this corner like that. So I'm going to put this visitor this way, and they could see down this way, and drop a two, and... <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'll try not to. No promises. Okay. Ooh, great. A five T-Rex. That's awesome. So with this line already having a swan, and the possibility of getting... Well, ooh, do we put the swan or the T-Rex? Because I could put the T-Rex behind the swan. Oh, yeah. That's a tough choice. Um, okay, I'm going to stick with the swan because for sure the swan would fit there. It would be awesome if I had a three T-Rex and a... Well, hmm, yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's stick with the swan. 
So the swan is going to go right there. Great for that visitor looking down this way and also great for that visitor coming down this way. Cool. Blue player. Grab one of these homies. And I'm thinking, why don't we come this corner and put a two here? That would that would benefit these top ones. So this, this one's going to go there and we're going to grab this, which is a four. And a four elephant, Ooh, four elephant doesn't really help. Well, it could help in that one line that we're actually working on right now. I'll show you how in just a second. So let's grab the two uh, swirly noodle and that's gonna go right here. And the four elephant would go great down here to have elephants matching. Red's turn. And it would be awesome if Red could get a, another swan or an elephant. We know that the four swan can't go here. We don't know that the blue player has the four elephant, but it's, it's uh, you know, a possibility that we won't even find it. I don't have a one right here to go over here. So I think we're gonna put our four pom-pom here. And in order to do that, we've gotta put a visitor, well, a four here. These would kind of block each other off. Hmm, maybe I put one here, cause four, yeah, four kind of goes this way. So uh, you'll kind of notice I'm hmm, focusing on certain, like, we're not really coming down this way. In a, in a multiplayer game, probably you'd be using these sides more, but where we're trying to start small and get bigger, it kind of seems like we're starting small and getting bigger that way. Um, but yeah, so we're going to come down here and take this one. All right, there's our five whale. And what we're doing, yeah, we were doing this. We're doing a four pom-pom. And we're putting that right there. That's going to help both of these guys, uh, especially if we can get, you know, some smaller numbers over here. All right, Blue's turn. And they have a one whale, a three T-Rex, and a four elephant. Um, well, a four elephant could go, what, like, pretty good over here if I put myself in that corner. Or getting the one whale there would be good, too. Um, let's, because a four... A four elephant would be better. Let's go for that one. So I'm going to put this here, grab this. And I didn't say this explicitly, but if you turn this over and you wanted to keep this here, you totally could because you're pulling this into your hand and then picking something from your hand to put down. So it's entirely possible that you flip this over and choose to keep it there. Uh, I don't want a three pom-pom here, so let's go replace that with this four elephant. And that's going to go right there. That doesn't really help this player with that four, but that's okay, because whether that was a five or not, we could make a five here, and he, he, we're doing the best we can. It's Red's turn, and I'm literally standing here realizing this game is so simple, I probably could have, and probably should have done a three-player game, um, but then you wouldn't get my cool arm movements going like zing, zing, so, like, where would it go? Zing? I don't know. I just, what, here we go. What am I doing? Okay, so two T-Rex, a five T-Rex, and a five whale. Where do I want to put those? Um, no swans. There aren't any whales on the board or T-Rexes. So where would be a good place to build? Maybe a two and a five T-Rex down here? Yeah, let's, let's go for that. So I'm going to put this here. Um, and we know the five T-Rex would go over here. I don't know if I want the two here or here. It kind of depends on what I end up with in my hand. So let's grab this one. All right, there's a two elephant. Ooh, ooh, I want a two elephant there. Okay, cool. Well, no, I want the T-Rex or the elephant. Probably doesn't matter. How about this? Let's save the T-Rex combos for a little bit later and uh, we'll grab the whale for now, I think. Yeah, we'll grab the whale for now. All right, that's going right there. Um, perfect, Blue's turn. Grab this little this little doodad. And they have a one whale, a three T-Rex, and a three pom-pom. So what would be good placement for them? Um, well, maybe the one whale, we gotta, hmm. Yeah, maybe a one whale coming down this way wouldn't be too terrible. Or a one whale here. Oh, do you know what? I want a one whale. Yeah, let's one whale that spot right there. Okay. Ooh, there's a four T-Rex. Um, and we're going for the one whale. Uh, he doesn't know it, but the red player has two of the T-Rexes also. <laughs> so that's cool. All right, one whale. 
That's going right. Oh, Nelly. Right there. Okay. We're kind of spreading ourselves out a bunch, but it's hard to know exactly. Well, I mean, yeah, you're that's the point of the game, is you're trying to keep track of all of these lines of sight, making sure that you're getting some point values. With eight visitors each, um, and there's 25 uh, tiles and one in the middle, assuming everybody takes a tile, because that's an optional thing, um, you would at most end up with 17 tiles flipped over, so some will stay face down. So I realize I'm neglecting some of my visitors, but not on purpose. Okay, so things are starting to get a little bit tougher on the choices as we we're just passing the halfway point a little bit ago. We're still holding on to those T Rexes, and I have my two, so I have a two elephant, two T Rex, and a five T Rex. So obviously a two elephant could go here, but that elephant isn't even going to be seen because of that pom pom there. So putting a two elephant here isn't great. Putting a two T Rex here isn't great because I have the five T Rex that I'm kind of waiting on. So my thought was, maybe I do put the two elephant here, but not for this direction's sake, but maybe for this direction, we're going to come up opposite of the blue player. So what if I put my visitor there, take this one, oh, a three swan, ooh, maybe I want to keep that there. No, well, crap. I could put two elephant here or a three swan here. I think the two elephant will be better because then I'm going to get that bonus going that way. And the swan, well, if I put a three swan here like this, that's kind of opening it up for the blue player to put a visitor here and take advantage of that bonus. I don't really want that. So let's, yeah, let's swap this out. So go this way, grab this, and put that there, I think. Yeah, Blue could still pop in here and take advantage of the 1-2 going on here um, and cut off the 5 possibility from Red. Hmm, well, let's see. Let's go grab one. So here's our visitor. And you know what? I do think that what I was saying is probably going to be the best move to put, like, a 3 pom-pom here and cut off the Red from putting a 5 back here. Uh, what are some other options? One, two, three. I could try to get something big over here, um, like a four, but I've only got the four T-Rex. We're kind of, for whatever reason, saving those T-Rexes, I guess. Um, what are some other options? This guy needs a one, but I don't have a one. This one could use a two or a three in either of these positions. Um, and if I put a three... Ooh, I could put a three pom-pom here and get... Yeah, maybe that is what I'll do. Because having a three and a four is better than is gonna be better with the bonuses than having a one, two, and a three. So yeah, let's come over here like that. Take a look here. Oh, a five elephant. Ooh, he wants the five elephant down here. All right, cool. But for now, we're grabbing this three pom pom, and that's going right there. We'll make sure that that's very obvious. The directions they're pointing. Okay, red, we're almost to the end. Okay, let's grab this guy here. And I think we're gonna take advantage of blue leaving this direction alone. Um, and we also need to get, yeah, okay. And we're gonna place here, let's go ahead and grab a T-Rex, I think, unless, what's this? A three whale, yeah, let's finally grab our T-Rex, yeah. There we go. We're not going to get the T-Rex combo, but it's going to get us five points. So, well, it's actually going to get us ten points, because we're going to get five points down this way and five points this way. So I think that was the best move there. Um, this Meeple would like a five over here, but that's also going to get blue five points. So if I am going to put a five here, I want it to be the five pom-pom, which we haven't seen yet. So there's that. All right, blue has two more turns. I just realized the camera had gotten really close in that last shot, so I pulled back just a little bit. Okay, what do we got? Last one. No, not the last one, but the second to the last one. All right, where are we going? Um, we still need a one there. You know, a one. It's one point. Take it or leave it. But it would be cool to get one there. Would it be great to get a five here, but again, that five is going to help out the red player as well. But a five elephant will help out the blue player get two more points, so maybe... Maybe we're going for a five elephant here. Um, if we come down this way and put a five, that would just help the blue player and not the red player. 
Maybe that's the better way to go. Well, hmm. Yeah. So either one of those getting a five. Which one is it? Um, or they have all those T-Rexes. <gasps> Ooh, maybe. Maybe what we do instead is help ourselves in this way. Okay, we're going to put this visitor going this way. In fact, I should have turned that visitor. He's looking that way. That one's looking that way. Okay, so we're going to go this way and put our four T-Rex and then our three T-Rex here if we can. Yeah, that'll be a good plan. So this one is a one. Oh, we could put the one up there later. Maybe. I don't think we'll have time. Blue basically has the rest of their placements planned out, I think. So we were going for the four T-Rex here. Yeah, so four T-Rex like that. Yeah, I'm feeling good about that, I think. And red. So one strategy worth discussing is like, for example, if I place here, I'm not getting a lot of view going this way, but but you do get five points. So kind of something worth thinking about. Um, where else could be good? Or where else were we trying to fill up? So this guy's done. Small number here. Well, I don't have a one. So nothing right there, I don't think. Here, I could get my threes. I could put a three here. And that doesn't help the blue player because they've already got a three over here. So that's an option is to get one of my threes here. I don't have a one here. That's done. Uh, coming up this way, mm, don't have a one. Okay, so I do think putting one of my threes here is best. How do I get a three there, though? Um, do I come over this way? Mm, that doesn't seem totally worthwhile. Maybe I come down from the top. Because then they could get the three and the four points here. All right. Ooh, a four. Is that helpful? No, I want the three. Ooh. Wait, I haven't seen any of that shape yet. That's random and funny and totally random. And I'm going to go for a three... Um, hmm. Either way. Go for a three whale. Oh, why did I put the four there? That was silly. Yeah, go for the three whale. So we'll put that there. That's three points for red and doesn't help blue out at all. Well, it's... Three points for this red and three points for that. So that's an, a total of six points. So that's pretty good. And then blue's final placement. Our goal was to get the three T-Rex out, I think. Yeah, hard to keep track of all those strategies. Uh, I'm keeping track of 16 meeples, essentially. And I wanted to get it here. So to get it here, I could put here, here, or here, or here. But if I put it here, I don't get to take advantage of the three points. I can double up my points, basically, if I place smartly. So let's, it doesn't matter, we'll go, we'll go upside down like that, flip this over, <laughs> there's the three triangle, that is so funny that I hadn't seen any of these yet. And we're just going to swap that out, right there, perfect, okay, blue is done. Ooh, and red, I just barely saw something that maybe I should have seen before, I'm, my guess is that you guys have been just screaming, why don't you put it there? It, and that, again, for me, is the fun of the game, is that you just don't see things uh, and you hope that other people don't see them before you see them. But hey, I just found a placement that I like a lot. And it's going to be this one right here to get these nine points. It would be awesome if I could put a three here because a three would not benefit blue in any way, shape, or form that I could see. So what have we got? A two pom-pom. Don't want to keep... I don't want to keep a two pom-pom there. Now, whether I choose to put the two T-Rex or the three Swan, I'm not sure that it matters either way. The two T-Rex will get me... Oh, do you know what? It does matter. A three Swan is good. But putting a two T-Rex, I can score two bonus points because there's another T-Rex in sight. So let's stick with this one. And it's going to go right there. And there's the other T-Rex that I was talking about. So there's our bonuses. All right. We are ready to uh, score some points. All right, so I've gone ahead and brought in the score tracker. We could see little tiny um, meeples over here. And kind of my plan, it, well, do you know what? These are kind of hard to see, aren't they? They are hard to see. That's okay. We're fine. I was thinking about I'm going to remove the meeples as I score them. Um, and so I was thinking, well, I could just put this meeple on the board. And either way, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're just going to start here and work our way around. So this meeple here, 
they can only see this three because everything behind it is empty or smaller. So three points for blue, and I'm gonna take this off the board so we know we've done it. Next, we're gonna score this red one. So this red one can only see this three T-Rex because everything else this way, why did I do that? I just blocked, oh, the blue player blocked that site. Oh, gosh, this is tough. Okay, so three points for this meeple, for that T-Rex, everything else is out of sight. All right, big scoring here. So we are gonna get, for this blue meeple, we're gonna get three plus four is seven, plus five is 12, and with these T-Rexes, they're each gonna get a bonus point. So that'll be 12, 13, 14 points. So that's gonna put blue up to 17. Great row there. All right, here for red, they can see this elephant, they can see this pom-pom, but not that elephant, but yes, this whale. So that's gonna be six plus five is 12, and no bonuses, because they can't see that elephant also. So that's gonna put them up to 15. Next up is this blue meeple, uh, which can see this swan, this whale, and this swan. So that's eight, nine, 10. So another 10 puts them at 27. This red can see all of these, so that's gonna be one, three, eight. So eight puts them at 23. You're gonna watch my mad math skills here. Okay, so this red meeple can see seven points worth of things coming down that way. And so another seven is gonna put them in the lead at 30. <clears throat> this blue can see this elephant and that elephant, so that's seven, eight, nine. So that's gonna put them at 36. This meeple up here can see all of these things and two of them are swans. So that's gonna be six, 11, 12, 13. So 13 plus 30 is 43. Take that off. Okay, this one can see this whale and this T-Rex. So that's just seven points. And so they're at 50, so we're gonna flip this over. If you flip it over, you can see, oh, focus, 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 whatever. It's fuzzy, but there's a 50 printed. So they're at 50 points now. And then this red one is seeing all of this stuff. That was great. So that was three, six, 10, 15 points. So they are up to 65 now, but they're basically out of meeples to score. There's one more meeple that will score a couple of points. All right, oh my gosh, I just kicked the camera, but I do not want to redo this whole thing, and I couldn't if I, I've been pulling them off. Okay, here we go, this guy over here just got two plus four is six points for that one. So take that off, walk around, not kick anything, and they're up to 42. Okay, walk back around, not kicking anything. And we've got, uh, this one can see one, plus three is four, and then they can see this one down here is nine, and there are two whales to be seen, so 10, 11 for that. Walk around. So 42 plus 11 is 53, so they're down here. All right, let's hit this diagonal. So this is gonna be one plus two, plus three, they're all different so far, so we're up to six, and then they can't see those things. So they can see six points worth of stuff over there. So they're up to 59, oh, this is tight. Okay, next, this meeple can see this three and this four, but they're missing these, which means they don't have any duplicates, so they got seven points for that one. So they are up to 66. Yeah, red got this one because of this move right here, the one that was just at the end that I noticed. So that was two plus four is six, plus another five is 11, 12, 13 for the two T-Rexes. So wait, what did I just say? Six, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, so 10, 11, 12, 13, awesome. So the red player got um, 78 points to blues, 66 points. And that was the end of Topiary. So again, a really fast game. There's blocking, there's strategy, there's um, <laughs> lots of choices, lots of plans. A really cool game. I love this game as a family game. Um, huge recommendation from me. 
Uh, I can't say enough good things about it. I think the pictures are awesome and uh, all the other good things that you're thinking in your brain, just pretend I said them. Give me credit for all of the things. All right, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have such an amazing night. Bye.